What's up, you guys? It's your favorite homegirl, and today we're gonna react to some videos. Today we got celebs who destroys their career on live TV. So I'm kind of interested in this, you guys. How how do you how do you destroy your career? Um, the only thing I can think like you're under influence or something. You basically said the wrong thing like you knew you shouldn't have said. Because you know, when you become a celebrity and you're on TV and people are looking up to you, you can't just act like a normal person, you guys. You can't be cussing. You know, you can't do that. You got to put on a whole different ass person, basically. And that's all celebs do. Every celeb you see, most of them has to put on a, um, a front, basically. I ain't going to say all. I ain't going to say all. But most. Like the actresses and actors and stuff like that, you guys. Even Snoop Dogg says you got to act a certain way to... um be in the lifestyle of the TV and the media. <laughs> so y'all let me know how y'all feel down in the comments and um, we gonna get straight to it. Celebs who destroys their career on live TV, y'all. I gotta make sure my kids stay outside because they gonna bother me, bruh. <laughs> Man, they extra. All right, so let's get straight to it, y'all. Success is a fickle thing that can disappear in the blink of an eye. These aspiring megastars were really going places before one flip comment, brash action, or untimely revelation stopped their careers in their tracks. Maybe it's just a little mistake, but add live TV to the mix and you've got a recipe for disaster. Yeah, Record disaster. skips. Yes. German R&B and dance pop duo Milli Vanilli rose to prominence at the end of the 80s with crossover hits such as Girl You Know It's True and Blame It on the Rain, selling millions of records and earning the duo the trophy for Best New Artist at the 1990 Grammys. Milli Vanilli. But for anyone paying close attention, the group's musical chops didn't hold up. First, the guys' voices didn't quite sound like their recordings, prompting questions from the press. But the moment that destroyed their careers happened live, well, live on tape. The duo performed Girl You Know It's True when the backing track began to skip, revealing Milli Vanilli wasn't actually singing at all. MTV recorded the entire concert live Damn. with the intention of playing it back at a later date, but the record skipping altered that plan slightly. In a media blitz, the duo were labeled as Damn. frauds, lawsuits were filed, and fans demanded refunds for albums. Their Grammy was revoked and they never performed again. Technical issues. That'd be harsh. That'd be harsh. Ashley Simpson, the punk rock little sister of singer Jessica Simpson, was on her way up when she booked a spot on SNL in October 2004. Her first album, Autobiography, had recently debuted to commercial success, with significant radio play for her singles Shadow and Pieces of Me. But when her SNL performance experienced a technical hiccup, it exposed a fatal flaw in Ashley's act. On a Monday, I am She wasn't actually singing, and the backlash hit hard. Damn. During her performance at the 2005 Orange Bowl, her live vocals were drowned out by a thunderous roar of boos. Her follow-up album, I Am Me, sold roughly a third of the copies in the United States that her debut did. Immediately after the lip-sync incident, which garnered national news coverage, her fans turned on her, and her music career never recovered. That would be so embarrassing, damn. Covered. And naturally, SNL has played host to plenty of other disastrous, career-ending moments on live television. Hot topic: Irish singer. Yeah. Shana okay. Now I heard of her, you guys, on my other channel. I um, react to her, and she's pretty. She's a pretty good ass singer. I like her. But I heard about this one, y'all. But I ain't never seen what she did. Aid O'Connor used her spot as a musical guest on a 1992 episode of SNL to make a political statement, and a rather provocative one at that. Concluding an a cappella performance of the Bob Marley song War, O'Connor sang her last lines while reaching for a photograph of John Paul II. Bruh. And then she tore it to pieces. Fight Damn. the real She was not playing. That was shots all the way fired. I mean. The move torpedoed the singer's burgeoning career in the U.S. and turned many people off her music, branding her as a high-risk, controversial act, a reputation money she's flow. maintained to this day. <laughs> But that wasn't even the worst career ender on SNL. For that, we have to go all the way back to the early 1980s. Network Takedown. With an untested cast under the guidance of new producer Gene Dumanian, the 1980-81 season of SNL started badly and got worse. The show dragged on throughout the winter as a national joke, its own sketches displaying a sharp awareness of its declining quality. An historic low was reached in the 11th episode of the season when cast member Charles Rocket dropped the F bomb. This is the first time I've been shot in my life. I let you know who 
It was the last straw for the studio, which began cleaning house promptly after the episode aired. But Rocket actually came dangerously close to sinking the entire show. NBC also fired Dumanian, and SNL went off the air for a month. By the time it returned, the show had replaced most of its writing staff and was in the process of purging every single one of its cast members, except Joe Piscopo and Eddie Murphy, mm. the sole survivors of a disastrous era. Too harsh. On New Zealand's version of The X Factor, one singer turned judge definitely crossed the line. British singer Natalia Kills lit into contestant Joe Irvine in 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, I am just going to state the obvious we have a doppelganger in our midst. Kills essentially accused him of copying his act and persona from her own husband, singer Willie Moon, who was also sitting on the panel as a judge. The intensity of Kills' disgust turned off the Dang, yeah, that was, that was kind of harsh. Like, you couldn't have come at him a different way, though? He just trying out, damn, he's trying to be reportedly seen. reportedly received consolations and cupcakes from fellow singer Lord, but he told the New Zealand Herald in 2016 that he's still traumatized. <laughs> traumatized. You were a grown-ass man, you traumatized, but I guess that would be embarrassing in front of all those people. So yeah, I guess that would be traumatizing. Roasted. Comic Doug Williams found himself in the hot seat at Shaq's all-star comedy roast of football player Emmett Smith. Following an introduction by host Jamie Foxx, Williams' set started slowly, but about three jokes in, Foxx began sniping at the comic, mocking Williams' punchlines and all but telling him to get off the stage. Liar, shut up. Is he right now? We're here for Emmett Smith. Do you have any jokes hey. for him tonight? Fox later defended his actions, calling his barrage, quote, very dark liquor induced. While the production wasn't broadcast live, there were no second takes for Williams. His bomb of a set lives forever online. Two words. The first day on a new job is always stressful, especially if your job subjects you to the scrutiny of everyone who might be tuned in to the Bismarck local news. Aspiring young broadcaster AJ Clemente let his anxiety get the best of him right off the bat. <laughs> Clemente was promptly fired from the station and supposedly hasn't helmed a broadcast since. Did you think that? Uh, Damn. The same day you got high, you got fired. <laughs> Your life was finished Boobie. when this happened? Extremely. Yeah. Um, I went home, crawled in bed, and called my parents. The Scream. During the 2004 presidential election, Democratic contenders lined up for the chance to contest Republican incumbent George W. Bush for the White House. Vermont Governor Howard Dean had an impressive lead over opponents Dennis Kucinich and John Kerry in early polls. But as the race went on and Kerry closed the gap, the margin for error got smaller and smaller. Chastened by a rough showing at the Iowa caucuses, Dean addressed a crowd with a rousing speech, making big promises to supporters. And then this happened. <laughs> the media destroyed him. Any chances his campaign even had of coming back were terminally derailed. I don't get it. But at least it gave us this classic Dave Chappelle moment. <laughs> and then I'm coming all the way to Washington, D.C. to take back the White Maybe House. Maybe I had a slow-ass moment. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Click the Nikki Swift icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love, too. <laughs> Was that supposed to mean? I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Like slave or something? Like I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Um, but this is celebs who destroy their careers on live TV, y'all. But like I said, that would be embarrassing. It would be a tragic moment. Like everybody looking at you, the whole world looking at you like that. They got it on tape that somebody is reacting to in 2019, y'all. <laughs> so that tells a lot. Let me know how y'all feel about these type of reactions and I'll keep doing more. Smash the like button, hit that red one, you guys. Let me know something. Let's go.